Hey, welcome back in, in today's video. Korean culture and American culture have been clashing this year with BTS becoming mainstream seemingly out of nowhere. The lead singer of Shiny passing away from strange circumstances and now Kim Jong-un from North Korea. It's, it's crazy that these things are happening, but there's a, so strongly the symbolism of Illuminati. It seems like a, like a, a pure work of fiction, but really is it? Over on the Ripzilla Twitter, I was reached out to by Badseed336. They said, So I'm a fan of K-pop, and after Gangnam Style, it started to catch on in the US. So watching the new BTS music video, and I noticed this weird ring on a woman's hand during the video. I paused and realized that it was a Freemason ring. Going back, through some of the other musical artists from Korea who are trying to appeal to American audiences, more Illuminati symbols. Momoland, BTS, let's check this out. So as you can see right there, he's covering up his left eye. That is very symbolic in, right there, it's very symbolic in uh, the Illuminati. They're all, looks like they're all covering their eye, but this one's main focused here. Let's refer to ar this article on the six rules of an Illuminati puppet. The Illuminati puppet, rule number three, must respect the eye of Horus. The eye of Horus, or the third eye, is an ancient Egyptian symbol of protection, royal power, and good health. It is an occult context, mystical and historical concept referring to a speculative invisible eye which provides perception beyond ordinary sight. The third eye refers to the gate that leads to inner realms and spaces of higher consciousness. The eye of Horus is an important symbol because the Illuminati puppets are constantly flashing the eye of Horus or all seeing eye. You can see the Illuminati Freemason ring on his left hand index finger. Looks like there's another one on this side, hard to tell, but you can tell, it's, it is blurry, but you can tell. I have here in my possession a Freemason ring. I'm gonna focus that on there for you. There you go. Don't ask me how I got it in my possession, but that's, that's it right there. Very clearly, it is the ring, and he's pointing to it. Strange. Now it's very strange that they're making these uh, videos with all this symbolism in it. They could easily not put the symbolism in, the, in here, and I don't think that they're in here for no reason. Uh, as BTS did seemingly come out of nowhere, and they came from a small label. That is probably the highlight that sticks out to me the most. And with big things moving... Uh, in Korea this year, there's lawsuits going on with big game companies, the PUBG uh, Epic Games lawsuit. The more recent North Korean leader Kim Jong uh, making a pact of peace with uh, President Trump in America. It's crazy that these things are happening this year. I just don't think it has, a, it doesn't seem like a coincidence. For fun, I consulted the internet gods, aka Google, and asked, is BTS part of the Illuminati? A Quora question came up and said, I cannot say for sure, but they seem like they definitely are similar to 1D, One Direction, where they do a demonic prayer over every album sold. Not everyone knows because they're stuck on the artist's success. They provided examples, one being fire performance at the M A M A opening. Let's check that out. It's a cathedral opening like a, an Illuminati ceremony. Very cult like, and we see the wings. The wings are gone here. Very demonic, which leads me to their first, I think, I believe this is their first album, Wings which has very symbolic meanings towards this and ties into the goat-horned god deity Baphomet. 
Very interesting article on Amino saying recently in order to delve into the theories from I need you to blood, sweat, and tears, I found myself reading Damien, the book the blood, sweat, and tears is based on. And having read a fair share of my books, I was surprised by Damien. If I had not known BTS, I feel like I would have loved the book anyways. So I got curious, what is this book? Damien, the story of Emile Sinclair's youth is this word, which is a literary genre that focuses on the psychological and moral growth of the protagonist by Herman Heese. First published in 1919, so this book's been around for a while. I got to looking into this book and realized that popular culture, both in Korean and American, and probably other parts of the world, based a lot from this book. It was published from Germany, which is interesting. Another interesting thing is the last name note is Sinclair. And you see a lot of the same symbolisms in the Korean culture that you see in Titanic Sinclair's directing with his project. That's right, you guessed it, that I'm poppy. Happy. There are three main themes in this book. Number one being embracing duality. One of the major themes is the existence of opposing forces and the idea that both are necessary. This basically means that uh, a duality between good and evil because good cannot exist without bad, bad cannot exist without good. You see this symbolized in people that are wearing uh, black and white checkerboard patterns very strongly. Actually in every Freemason hall there is a checkered floor that symbolizes this duality, meaning that you cannot have bad without good or good without bad as they are both intrinsically the same thing, therefore called duality. Now what does this mean? It means for something to be good, you have to have bad to compare it to. If there was never anything bad, then good could not exist, vice versa. That's very interesting. Uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. The second one is spiritual enlightenment. The novel refers to the idea of Gnosticism, particularly the god Abraxas, showing the influence of Carl Jung's psychology. According to Hees, the novel is a story of Jungian individuation, the process of opening up to one's unconsciousness. This means and is based upon current new world order as far as spiritual awakening, meaning that the thoughts in our head are not to be identified as our own person. And I know what you're thinking, what does that mean? Does that mean the thoughts in my head aren't me? Pretty much because it's, it's saying that the thoughts and who we really are need to be separated. If you can be the observer of your thoughts and realize that the thoughts are not you, but you're the watcher, then you can be more conscious of your actions. The third theme is woman in Damien. Women play a vital role in the Jungian interpretation of Damien. At the beginning, Sinclair looks up towards his sisters and mother, and even his housemaid. While he was in school, he sees beautiful woman who he calls Beatrice. And towards the end of the novel, when Sinclair is an adolescent man, he discovers Damien's mother, Froeva. These women do have major roles in the story, but he uses them symbolically as faucets of the depth of Sinclair's mind. And it's very interesting to me because way, way, way back in the past, uh, women were the whole feministic energy was revered in a godlike way. Uh, even cats were worshipped in the Egyptian times because of the feministic energy. Um, moving forward, the masculine energy was said to have been scared of this and wanted to sort of cover up the feministic energy. It's a whole thing and it's worth a Google. So this part right here is symbolic because it's actually he's quoting a line from the book Damien. The releasing of the balloon represents innocence lost. The longing for the balloon is him wanting to hold on to his innocence just a little bit more. Moving forward to the infamous part where he actually kisses the statue. As it is before his kiss with the devil, which symbolizes him giving into temptation, shaking hands with the devil, and accepting his adult self. It fits perfectly into the context in which Sinclair in the book discovers the world he lives in is not at all as it seems and realizes the evil within himself. The Illuminati puppet must pay tribute to Baphomet. 
Baphomet is an androgynous goat-headed figure who is widely regarded as one of the most important characters in occultism. Very few people have heard of the name Baphomet, and yet most famous people on the planet routinely honor this figure. You can see Kanye West wears the Baphomet. There's even LeBron James wearing a Baphomet ring. Uh, these symbolisms can be found all over the um, uh, Rothschilds family. The Rothschilds control most of the money in the entire planet. It can even be seen LeBron James saying a satanic prayer before a game. He's trying to do this nonchalantly where nobody notices, but I'm going to point it out to you. The first pose that he's doing here is the as above, so below Baphomet prayer. As you can see in this illustration here, moving on afterwards, he goes into the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye here. Going further here, these two right here stand for the Lord of Light himself. That's right, Satan. And then he beats on his heart, more prayers, and he's ready to go. It's crazy to see someone do this in public. You can tell he's looking around to make sure nobody notices. I thought that was very interesting to show you. Um, you'll see a lot of uh, huge celebrities doing these specific types of prayers to the popular culture. There it was, right there. Let's see if we can catch it, right there. Uh, clearly, that is the symbol uh, of the all-seeing eye. And you're gonna see stuff like this, and yes, it is crazy. Let's see if we can find any in the red velvet video. There it is! Oh my god, they're all doing it. Tell me this is not a coincidence. Tell me that you are seeing this as well. 666, the number of the beast. Everyone knows that 666 is the number of the beast, but did you know how often celebrities and entertainers flash it? There's Drake doing it there. We have uh, Jackie Chan doing it there. Illuminati puppets are everywhere. You should know the influencers of your influencers. Baphomet, the goat horned god deity, is the symbol that the Illuminati worship, but the meaning behind it is for them to get children while they're young and easily influenceable so they can push them to do things easier um, in the future. Imagine, if you will, uh, having a whole generation of children following these uh, specific idols the influencers you're talking about drake you're talking about bts the different ones uh more recently korean uh influencers such as bts and all of them and popular culture is pushing children to that because if you can influence them when they're young that it'll be easier for them to corral and to do what they want later on imagine if you will a whole generation of basically people ready to do exactly whatever you want and the worst part about it is is you do not know that you are doing it you don't know that you're programmed you don't know it's very it's very uh monarch mind control type stuff it's very conspiratorial it's very spooky stuff here never ever shine a light into the shadows anytime a celebrity or entertainer speaks out against the secret elite one of two things happen they're either slowly fizzled out of show business or they mysteriously end up dead. And we've seen this time and time again. Uh, so many people that have ended up dead right after they've said very controversial things. Uh, it happened a lot in American pop culture and now in Korean, the most recent one to pass away was a K-pop singer. Uh, I, I cannot pronounce the name, but it was the lead singer of Shiny. He died at 27. Of very mysterious uh, circumstances. Standard procedure is to label their death, heart attack, drug overdose, suicide, natural causes, or unknown. Eyes Wide Shut was a movie in 1999 film starring Tom Cruise. Many experts on Hollywood and the occult were quite impressed with Cubic's accuracy in portraying the Illuminati party at the mansion. Now this was a movie that was portraying an Illuminati party at the mansion. A lot of people don't know there was actually a real Illuminati party held by, you guessed it, the Rothschilds family. This is photos from the 1972 Rothschilds Illuminati party. As you can see, they're all wearing uh, and worshiping Baphomet, the goat horn god deity. The same ones that uh, BTS, uh, 
and other K-pop bands are currently worshiping and saying prayers to. They had the secret invitation that could only be read in a mirror. The mansion was beautiful, but man, it was odd. Very odd. Very odd symbolisms, satanic symbolisms uh, alike throughout the whole thing. But was that movie a little bit too accurate for the Illuminati's liking? Did he actually know exactly how the Illuminati worked and did he get too close? Because... All we know is that Stanley Kubik, who is frequently cited as one of the greatest and most influential directors in cinematic history, was found dead six days after screening the final cut of the movie. Apparently, he died of a massive heart attack in his sleep. He was 70 years old, and this is really crazy because there's a an old-time popular favorite of uh, killing people from the Illuminati. That it's it's this it's this poison that brings on heart attacks called. So, interestingly enough, this is the Illuminati Oath. It's on the Titanic Sinclair website. Yes, his last name is Sinclair. It is his uh, stage name. Uh, having the last name Sinclair being from another influence from the Book of Damien, published in 1919, as the main character's name was Emil Sinclair, this cannot be a coincidence. Uh, we know that Titanic Sinclair is very, very... Uh, big on Asian culture as they love Japan. I'm sure they love Korea as well. It says honor and respect the aqua to fauna as a sure prompt and necessary means of purging the globe by death of those who seek to vilify the truth, which means people that are exposing the Illuminati. Let's go ahead and see what aqua to fauna's effects on the body actually are. Aqua to fauna was to go unnoticed as it has no taste and is clear. It was slow acting, resembling progressed diseases or death from natural causes. The symptoms seen are similar to the effects of arsenic poisoning. There were a number of symptoms exhibited by the poisoning of Akutufana. The first small dosage would produce cold-like symptoms. The victim was very ill by the third dosage. Symptoms include throwing up, dehydration, diarrhea, and burning sensation in the digestive system. The antidote often given was vinegar and lemon juice. The fourth dosage would kill them. As it was slow acting, it allowed victims time to prepare for their death, including writing a will and rep repenting. Aquatafana could not be detected in the bloodstream, therefore it, w it could be identified in post-mortems. So, very widely used and possibly still used today. In American culture, the more recent person, young person, uh, to be killed was XXX Tentacion. He was an American rapper. He was shot down in Florida in a suspected uh, burglary, but it's just crazy because he was speaking out and known to speak out about things in the industry. It seems like when people get to talking about specific things like that they end up in not a very good outcome did you see something that i completely missed or something that you felt was important for me to talk on on this specific video let me know because as interesting as this is there's always something that's more interesting to me that's right you guessed it i want to know what you think so why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and or interesting responses in the comment box below thumbs up for those likes and as always brothers and sisters i will see you in the next video. K-pop came out of nowhere, right? Like no one was listening to K-pop in America and then it's there. It's shrouded with mystery. There's so many different directions that this can go in. <laughs> but I know one thing for sure, that you're repping, and if you're not repping, you're gregging. How do you become a member of the Rep Squad? Well, all you gotta do is subscribe with notifications turned on. Be in the comment section to every single video because I'm gonna be there. Greg the Cat is going to be there, and the rest of the Rep Squad community is going to be there. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you.